Yo, Kepi Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to season eight, episode number two of Subscriber Showcase. Now, down below in the description box is the link to my playlist called Subscriber Showcase. In case you've missed any episode or any season thus far, go back and watch them because they are really cool. And so is this episode today. We have three submissions from all across the world. So you're going to see some really cool spins on home theater, both in picture form and in video. So what you need to do, you know how this goes. You go to the kitchen, you open up the, open up the fridge, grab yourself a water, pour a lemonade packet inside, then go to the pantry, grab you a chewy granola bar, head tack to the couch, and enjoy the show. We're starting off with my man, Dan Black. He's been here before. If you're an OG at the, at the channel, he's been on here before, but made some nice improvements. So his hardware of choice, he's using the Imitiva XMC-2 processor paired with a Monolith 7x200, as well as an Outlaw 7000X. He has two different Behringer sub-amps. One is the NX6000 and the other is the NX3000. His television of choice is the LG CX65 inch as well as four Imitiva CMX2 power blocks. He has an HD Fury Vroom, Apple TV 4K, and all his cables are from AudioQuest. His power cables are from AudioQuest as well as his HDMI 48 cables are from AudioQuest. He has a Pangea high current outlet and a mini DSP HD, an industrial PC to run Roo and Dirac on. So let's talk about his speakers. I know you guys wanna know about those. He's running seven bed layer PSA or power sound audio speakers. He has two PSA MTM 210s, MTM meaning mid-range, Twitter mid-range. He has one PSA MTM 210C, that's his center channel. He's also running four PSA MT110Ms and four Atmos speakers that are called JBL Arenas. He has three 18 inch Dayton Audio Ultimax UM822 subs in a custom built box, each in a room about 24 by 24 by 38 with a port tuning of 10 Hertz. Now Dan Black's pretty crafty too. He says his whole room is fully insulated. His acoustic panels are also hand built and use safe and sound rock wall in them, 15 inches in total. His corner bass traps are from Acoustic America and all his speaker stands are hand built as well as the entertainment stand. He hand built that himself. He has three lazy boy seating as well. And he says, thanks for letting us show off our systems. Love all your content, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for the submission. I love it as well. What's up guys, welcome to my home theater here. It's right here in this room in front of us. And the length wouldn't height on this room, we're 26 by 13 by 10 feet, plus a four foot vaulted ceiling. And the length is so long that I actually can double up as a bedroom right here. And now we're gonna come here. And my sources are a Nintendo 64, a Nintendo Switch, a Wii, a Chromecast, a Roku, and a Panasonic DPUB 420 4K Blu-ray player. And we have some games, some controllers, and uh, some movies as well. And uh, now we're gonna have a story time. So throughout my whole childhood, this room was nothing like what it looks like now. At first, I used to just play old Nintendo games and watch Netflix through an old Sony CRT TV with a Sony Home Video Box 5.1 system. And my dad wanted the theater experience in the family room, but he didn't have the best time setting it up there. Eventually, he did when he moved him here and upgrading the family room TV to a Samsung HD TV, which eventually came to this room as we got rid of the CRT TV.
and then the family room upgraded to 4K. I didn't even know what surround sound was back then. And I didn't have all the speakers set up correctly. I didn't know about all the levels of sound quality up there until just about last year when I really started to research a lot about it. Then I set up the speakers correctly with the positioning and the wiring and the receiver configurations and connections, yada yada yada. The first upgrade to the system was adding a second subwoofer. And it wasn't an exact model that the system had, but it was overall a better one since it was really relatively new compared to the old Sony sub, which was over two decades old, possibly older than me. <laughs> then, following my 19th birthday, as I got curious about stepping up to 7.2, my family gave me a good amount of birthday money, which I used to buy my first receiver, the Yamaha TSR7850. It's the best thing I ever bought in my life. Like Zone 2, HDMI inputs, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, 4K, Dolby Vision pass-through, high channels, and it's crazy. They shoot stuff up. I love my family, man. The best thing about this receiver is the app. So convenient to just have the remote as a simple app in your phone. And sound quality-wise, I think the best thing about it is the parametric equalizer. It really helps you fine-tune the system into how you want it to sound. And overall, over time, as you're figuring out how you like your sound and upgrading your speakers, you can pretty easily find what kind of sound you like and get good quality speakers that match more closely to what that sound is like. And if you're at the point where your manual equalizers are simplifying the kind of sound that the speakers already have, then you may have just found your match. And now back to the birthday. And I love my parents. They got this 85 inch TV so that we can all have movie nights every weekend. And it's awesome. Dolby Vision 4K HDR10. Beautiful colors, it's nuts. Now to these high speakers, these are those satellite speakers from the Klipsch ProMedia 2-in-1 system. And as people usually use it for their a small bedroom system in a, or some computer setup. But still, they sound good, like really good. And the same that same system is where I got the second sub from and my brother gifted it to me. And as you can see, they're not designed to be mounted, but I did a little thinking and got some super cheap mounts off eBay and some kind of a bit of wood plank into some small bits and with screws in the right places. And I made myself a super cheap DIY speaker hanger for each of them. And offered just 20 bucks and they're still holding strong today. So actual Apple speakers would have costed like three to four hundred dollars for like a single pair and yet my brother gifted me two of these systems at just about 60 bucks each, and I turned it to four high speakers for less than half of that. And they come with two nice small subwoofers as well. Wow, I love my brother. Now to these babies. The clips are 610Fs. Funniest story, actually. At first, my cousin gifted these to my brother-in-law. And then he gifted them to me since he lives in an apartment and isn't really comfortable with the sound system, even though he loves movies. Meanwhile, my brother has his own system in his apartment, and it's cool since he knows how to keep it cool with the neighbors. Anyway, even though these are like the cheapest tower speakers that Klipsch has to offer, they're still the best speakers I've ever heard. Like, the great amount there. They have a great amount of bass without a subwoofer, even though I still use one, and everything else is just beautiful. Vocals, mid-range, clarity, sweet, airy treble, and I love the look without the grills on. And the final speaker upgrade was the surround speakers. It's quite amazing how over time you start to notice the details of what's happening in the system. And before I upgraded the surrounds, I could pretty easily tell that the, that the high speakers in the fronts were timber matched pretty nicely since they were from the same brand, same quality. And the surround has a lot of duty, especially for action movies. So. I first got the Eclipse R41Ms for just $100 a pair, and they blended with all the speakers so well. And now all the old tiny Sony speakers were replaced. Then when I finally landed a job, thanks dad, I was able to find these RP150Ms for just $200 a pair. And the RP600Ms for $250 a pair, and I had a chance to compare everything. And though I do think they're worth the extra $100, it turns out, between all the combinations that I've tested out, I, pref I actually prefer the timber match of the 150s with the reference towers compared to the 600Ms, even though the towers in the bookshelves are from different lineups. Quite odd, I know, but hey. 
live and learn. Then I sent the 600 M's and the R41M's over to my brother for front sense around. And it was definitely an upgrade for him as well. And he loves them. Happy early Thanksgiving, bro. And as you notice these hexagons on the wall, these are indeed acoustic panels. We're just 33 bucks on Amazon for a whole pack of 16 of them. So for just two bucks a piece, I cleared up the high mid-range and treble and made the imaging more precise. And luckily for me, that's all I really wanted. And these also have some actual density to them, unlike the foam stuff that has to stick out a lot to do the same thing. Yeah, the ceiling is so, and if the ceiling is so high and vaulted that upward bouncing Apple speakers, that upward bouncing Atmos speakers are just a no bueno, then generally speaking, I don't really have to treat the ceiling. Plus I do like a tall sound stage. And pretty much the whole floor is like a carpet, so that's nice. And now for the subwoofer upgrades, here is a 12 inch sub, the first subwoofer I ever actually bought in my life. The Klipsch R112SW. And before I got my job at first, it was really hard to find an affordable sub within my budget that would fill the needs of a big bass head like me in a 4,000 cubic foot room like this. But at just 349 on Crushfield, I really could not ask for anything better than this. Things a mess. I got chills re-watching a bunch of movies and listening to music with this. And feeling and hearing details I've never felt before. It blended it with everything so well, I could not believe what I was hearing. And after I got a job, I got this little beast. The Mini DSP 2x4. This is just a cheaper non HD version, and it's a game changer to just be able to time and base align all your stuff together and fine tune everything. And with that, I also got a second subwoofer, and it's matching this time, and some buck kickers under the couch, and two other subwoofers up front. Now, about these buck kickers, they are something else, man. If you love the tactile feel of subwoofers, but don't want to turn them up so loud to get that same feeling, you just gotta get some buck kickers. They're way cheaper than getting a new sub, and much more efficient. And if you notice right here is that small subwoofer from that Clips Pro Media System. And there is another one. And there's another one on this side. And I actually disconnected the drivers, and connected the plate amps to the buck kickers. And each amp is powering two of them in series. So there's four bucket kickers in total. And I saved quite a bit of money since I don't even need to buy separate amps for them. Thanks again, Bo. And now to these bad boys. The big PL300s. Best bang for your buck for just $4.49 a piece. And as I was studying my room's acoustics, I noticed that deeper bass sounds better farther away from the subs. And mid bass is better when closer to the subs. So I would definitely low pass this up all the way up to 80 when I'm up close to them, but not when I'm all the way over there. So the Bix and the Clips just complement each other that way. And it's both an earthquake simulator and beautifully musical. And they both, and they do both of those well on their own. It's just that one does the other better. And it's freaking amazing. And now to the nervous system. I tend to come back here and adjust some stuff a lot or add some new wire and without these white tubes helping out with cable management, I would have gotten lost pretty easily. And it's a fairly nice clean look. And after the latest upgrade, these W backlights. Having the ambient lights match exactly what's happening on screen just takes the immersiveness to a completely different level. I did not know what I was missing out on until my brother and sister-in-law gave this to me on my 20th birthday. Man, you guys are awesome. I love you guys so much. Thank you. So I guess the next upgrade would be like changing out the curtains and I guess some art on the walls maybe. Yeah, the home theater journey has been absolutely incredible so far. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this ride. Happy holidays. Peace out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for episode number two of Subscriber Showcase. Thank you so much to the three submitters we have for today's episode. We have lots more coming, and it only gets better as we go. So if you want to enter into something like this, it's not too late. My email is kpaceguy at gmail.com, or send it to my Facebook at Kyle Pace and Instagram at kpaceguy. However you want to get it to me, Dropbox, we transfer. I am more than happy to put you on the channel because we still have a few more episodes to do, so I have time to throw you in. So if you like what you see and you want to put your, your 
your system on the channel, feel free to send me some stuff. I'll be more than happy to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you guys in the next video. K Pace Guy out. Peace. Say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down.